At 182,930 miles, any Ram 5.9 liter engine needs a close look at the vibration damper. The original equipment damper is a two-piece inertial outer ring and cast hub. The inertia ring and hub are separated by rubber. This rubber deteriorates over time in the process of damping the vibration. On the Cummins 5.9 liter diesel, the maximum wear at the vibration damper is 1 16th of an inch offset between the two indexing marks. This is the vibration damper at 182,930 miles on our Ram 5.9 liter engine. The damper is in extraordinarily good condition for that mileage. This is an indication that the engine has not been taxed or overworked like many diesel engines are. Despite the condition of the damper, these dampers have shortcomings. They are tuned to one vibration frequency. As a result, the engine is not protected across the entire RPM range. The fluid damper, by contrast, has an inertia ring that floats in silicon fluid. The inertia ring acts like a flywheel, and as it shears the silicon fluid, it dampens vibration at all frequencies across the engine RPM range. The result is full engine protection throughout the normal engine RPM range. We chose to install the Fluid Damper 30007 installation kit which consists of ARP bolts and a friction washer. Our Gen 3 engine uses the 920301 Fluid Damper that is drilled for both the aftermarket pinning and the factory locating pin. The diameter of the fluid damper is nine and a quarter inches, approximately one half inch larger in diameter than the OEM harmonic damper. The factory procedure for removing the OEM damper is to remove the fan shroud and the fan assembly. The reason for this is a limited clearance between the damper and the fan. The fluid damper with its built-in tone ring is actually deeper than the factory OEM harmonic damper. Some attempt to change out the damper without removing the fan and shroud. On the 2005 Gen 3 chassis, the easier way to do it is to loosen the shroud and offset the shroud on the ends of the bracket studs. The next step is to uncouple the fan assembly from the fan drive hub. There are now niche tools for removing the coupler from the fan hub. Lyle makes the 43300 pneumatic fan removal tool. The air hammer shown at left is not included in the kit, although the kit contains seven sizes of fan wrenches. The serpentine belt tensioner enables loosening and removing the drive belt. It also is a means for using the tensioner to place a load on the belt during fan coupler removal. Loosening the fan without removing it makes the space available at the bottom near the damper. With the hood open and under tension, I'm able to hang a wire from the hood latch down to the fan to make a sling for the fan. When the fan uncouples, it will be suspended and able to stay away from the radiator core. Once the fan is uncoupled, it can be lowered carefully until the bottom of the fan blades touch the bottom of the shroud. Lay the top of the fan assembly against the engine until the coupler rests against the dry flange hub. Watch the tube with the wires running to the fan clutch. Do not damage the tube, the shielded wires, or the wire connector at the bottom. Here the fan blades set at the bottom of the shroud. There is ample clearance between the plastic fan blades and the radiator core. Here is the amount of clearance produced by loosening the fan and angling the assembly from the lower fan shroud toward the engine at the top. This is enough space for handling either the OEM damper or the fluid damper. The quickest and professional method for holding the crankshaft securely while loosening the damper bolts is the 7471A OTC diesel barring tool. Designed for the Dodge Ram 5.9 liter turbo diesel, this tool is a must. Here the barring tool is in place. A block of wood is against the frame 
and a ratchet rests snugly against the block of wood. Make sure the ratchet is facing in the direction that will keep the crankshaft from rotating as you loosen the damper bolts. For an OEM damper replacement, this tool can work. The slotted damper enables the use of a holding tool of this sort. The holding tool will fit into the slots in the damper. The tool cannot be used with a fluid damper as there are no slots in the damper hub. The pins reach through the slots, just through the slots, as you do not want these pins to interfere with the timing cover. Here, the recesses in the pins shoulder against the slots in the damper hub. This is strictly a holding tool and still requires the use of a breaker bar and socket. You're simply applying a counter force to the breaker bar. A crankshaft barring tool like the OTC 7471A is a much simpler and positive holding solution that simply requires the socket and breaker bar. The dowel pin will help keep the damper in place. Rock the damper carefully to remove it. The OEM damper weighs around 15 pounds. The fluid damper weighs 23 pounds. The tone ring is a separate piece. It must be removed. The tone ring is centered on the crankshaft pilot stub and the dowel pin. The fluid damper tone ring must be located in the same position as the OEM tone ring. Always inspect the crankshaft front seal when the damper has been removed. This is a good time to replace the seal. This seal is not leaking. The moisture around this area was from a leaking water pump. Clean the crankshaft face and the threads. If necessary, chase the threads with a tap. Use the tap prudently. Use Scotch-Brite on the pilot stub. Use compressed air to clean out the threaded areas and the face of the crankshaft. Avoid driving debris into the seal. This is the friction washer that is included in the 300007 fluid damper mounting kit. These are the ARP bolts and washers. The washers have a chamfer that faces up toward the bolt head. A small dab of antices is put on the bolt threads and washer faces. ARP recommends ARP Ultra Torque Lube. Conventional antices for industrial or automotive use will work. There is plenty of room for the use of a torque wrench. Tighten in three stages in cross pattern before finally making a circular pattern, letting the bolts rest for a few minutes and retorquing again. Viewing is with a mirror from this location. Note that the dowel locating pin is in the small hole of the damper. Before installing a new drive belt, the water pump issue is addressed. This is the second water pump we've replaced on the Cummins engine. This is a chronic issue with these engines. Expensive pumps, inexpensive pumps. Ours have lasted no more than 100,000 miles. This would be our second Gates replacement pump, but we'll put it aside as a spare. Instead, we're going to try this $40 pump from O'Reilly's. The old school design just might work. Pure silicon paste is a recommended lubricant for the O-ring furnished with the water pump. New Dorman 10.9 metric hardware replaces the original rusted bolts. We're using Permatex Orange on hardware. Our fastest approach for removing and replacing the water pump is to remove the right side of the engine shroud bracket, which gives you immediate access to the pump. 
The opening between the shroud and the engine is ample and the pump can be easily removed and the new pump installed. A new Dorman idler pulley upgrades the pulley. The Dorman pulley at right has a much larger bearing than the original equipment pulley on the left. 